All right, today we're going to be talking about bacteria and viruses. We're going to do this one in a little different way than we've done some of our other lessons. Bacteria and viruses are very different from regular cells. We learned in an earlier session that bacteria are what are called prokaryotes. They don't have a developed nucleus, and we're going to see that in a minute. But viruses themselves are not very complex at all. So let's see a little bit of detail about viruses and bacteria as we begin. First thing you'll want to do is I'm going to give you a little bit of notes so that you can tell the difference between them. So here in a second you'll want to uh, stop the video and take the notes. This information below this line are all bacteria. Viruses are at the top. So I'll give you a minute to copy down these notes and then we'll pick up and look what you read and what you've written down. All right, a couple of things about what you read. Viruses are essentially made up of genetic material. They're not living. They have to have a host. One of the most important things you need to know about viruses is that they have to have a host. They cannot live on their own. They have a little bit of genetic material, but it's not enough to function as a cell. So viruses are going to live off things like you and me and animals. So they have to have some kind of host to live on. Now sometimes viruses can actually live off of bacteria because bacteria are living cells. That's the big difference between the two. They're living. They get their energy from other cells and they live in colonies. There's good bacteria and bad bacteria. One of the, the best examples that they talk about good bacteria is this one right here when they talk about digestion. In our intestines we have bacteria that live there that help us digest our foods. They're very, very important as the last means of getting all the vitamins and nutrition out of our food. Animals have the same thing. Cattle have good bacteria that live in their digestive system as well. So bacteria can be good. They could also be bad. And then to, whenever you get a bacteria infection, bacterial infection, antibiotics are what you're going to take. These will not work for viral infections. They don't help with viruses. Viruses typically have to run their course, sort of like when you get the flu. Now you have the notes, and the big difference is viruses have to have a host. Bacteria are already living, and there are such things as good and bad bacteria. We're going to look at a couple of examples of each. Here's a picture of a typical bacteria. Now you may want to pause here in a second and draw the picture just so you have an idea. A couple of things that I want to mention about the bacteria. You'll notice it does have a cell wall. It does have some genetic material inside, some DNA. It has a plasma membrane. It also has ribosomes, so it can survive. It's not near as complex as cells like in you and me, but it's pretty complex. They don't have a nucleus. That's why they're going to be prokaryotes. If you'll remember, humans and other cells were eukaryotes. This one is a prokaryote. I'll write that word so to make sure you have it. That's what these things are. They're prokaryotes. You and I, easy way to remember it, you are a eukaryote. And so we're a lot more complex than this. You'll also know that in this case, with this prokaryote, he actually has a tail that he can flop back and forth to move along if he needs to. And so there are bacteria all over the place. And bacteria are very, very simple looking. Now, a virus, on the other hand, may look as weird as a picture like this. Almost looks like an alien spacecraft. And this is a more detailed picture, but typically you'll see a picture that looks like this. Some viruses are going to be round and they have spines coming off them. Uh, but here's the, the basic virus that they'll typically show you. You'll notice that inside it does have genetic material and it says DNA or RNA, it can have either one, but it doesn't have very much. And this virus is now going to infect a cell. And so when it infects a cell, here's what this process actually looks like. In this picture is a picture of a virus infecting a cell. Now let me explain to you what's happening. You'll notice that right here, 
the virus is attaching to the outside. We'll just say this is a cell of you and I. And there's our DNA inside drawn very simplistically. But you'll also notice the little red inside this virus. That's that genetic material, that DNA or RNA that it has inside. It attaches, and on the bottom of that virus is what looks like a little needle, and it will inject, just like a needle when you go to the doctor, it will inject its DNA inside the cell. Now you'll notice in this picture, right here, its DNA is now stuck inside this cell's DNA. So it literally cut open the DNA of the cell and it put its DNA inside. So it's almost like you took it and you cut a string, tied another piece of string inside of it and tied it all together. Here's the problem. Whenever a virus infects a cell, we don't know where its DNA actually goes. It can go anywhere. So it's hidden. And you'll notice that whenever this cell goes through mitosis, it splits. And now you get two cells that now have that DNA that came from the virus. And then it spreads it again. So now you have multiple cells that have the virus. How did that happen? Well, it injected it into one. But when it was time for the cell to go through normal splitting to make new cells, it actually made that DNA as well. And all the new cells now have it. Now, sometime what will happen is that virus will kick on its DNA. It'll turn on a switch, and all of a sudden, it now starts to take over the cell. So this hidden DNA inside has just been sitting there for a while, and then all of a sudden, one day it becomes a little Hitler, and it starts taking over the cell. And you'll notice that in these four pictures, the DNA doesn't look the same anymore. It doesn't look like it did up here. It's taking over the cell, and basically what these little Hitler DNA are doing is they're just taking over the cell and they said stop doing what you're doing we now run the show and these little pieces of red DNA say you're not going to work like normal you're now going to be a factory of making new viruses and you'll notice that the cell that was normal before up here and here and here is now making viruses this is how viruses spread and then after a while, that cell gets so full of viruses, it's actually put the, the RNA or DNA in there. All of a sudden, one day, those cells break open. And when those cells break open, they shoot all those new viruses that can now go out and infect. And so that's how when you get the flu, you may just get one of the virus, but it spreads. It starts to take over very quickly. And as it does so, 